Hi, uh, good afternoon. My name is Anita Whitehead and at KPMG, I lead our corporate citizenship services practice as well as chairing uh, the KPMG Foundation. Uh, joining me today is my colleague, Mark Fitzgerald, who leads our global international development assistance services. So we're here today to talk about partnerships, um, the successes that they make, uh, and how we can grow those partnerships in achieving the SDGs. With COP26 underway, uh, there's been a lot of focus around ESG, climate change, and we all know that this has been on the forefront of agendas on the UN, the World Bank, um, and even the Olympics. Um, so Mark, uh, starting with our first question, um, there's a lot of conversation about development and the business space around climate and ESG. Can you give us an idea of why it's important for stakeholders to, from all sectors to be involved? Thanks, Anita. And immediately I'm going to go off topic, uh, but I'll come <laughs> back to your question in a second. I'm going to start. I'm always conscious of things that I see in a room and how I link them to different topics. So I'll start with, uh, I'm wearing my SDG pin here. Um, and that will be the cornerstone for all our comments here this afternoon. But uh, if I may, I'm going to pick out a couple of different things that I've seen. If you look at the technology um, in front of us, the face mask I have in front of me here, uh, what else do I have in here? My iPhone. And I'm going to connect all of those into a way that I think uh, adds value to our conversation today. Um, also, what you can see is I've got a nice Walgreens kind of bandage on the top of my left arm. Um, and I've just had my booster for COVID-19. And I reflected on that. One, I was a little bit frustrated because through my iPhone, I couldn't get my Walgreens booster at exactly the same day or exactly the same hour that I thought would suit me. I had to wait 24 hours to get the booster. Um, and then I thought, okay, well, the technology is wonderful. That is part of the solution. But how privileged am I not only to get a booster, but to complain about waiting 24 hours for that booster? So it also reminds me there's a yin and yang to uh, all the SDGs, how they interconnect with each other. But also it breeds a conversation, reflection on inequalities across all 17 of the SDGs. And I know we're going to focus on seven, uh, SDG 17 today, but you can't look at one in isolation. You've got to look at the interconnection. Uh, you mentioned about uh, COP26. I, I note this week's Economist, it says COP out. Um, and I reflected on it, I read it, uh, and all the points, as usual, in The Economist are well met and, and made. Um, but is the glass half full or is it half empty? Uh, are we being radical enough or are we being realistic enough in terms of what's happening at the world at large? And we're going to give some examples to what is happening behind the scenes. Who are those technicians, those people who really are dealing with the day-to-day -day tactical measures that need to be put in place for these SDGs to be achieved? Now, you can talk about the fact we've only got a little over eight years left to 2030. Uh, are we being urgent enough? Um, but at the same time, we've had the last two years of a global pandemic. There's been regression on many of the achievements we've had in international development over the last 20 years, particularly in areas of health. Yet, when we put a mask on, um, we know that individual activity can have an impact in a positive way. So anyway, to answer your question, uh, uh, thank you for indulging me on that. To answer your question, I, if, I, if I focus on COP26 um, and all the various players are there, you've got to think about that patchwork. Uh, you've got government, you've got political leaders, you've got international organizations like the World Bank, the UN, you've got uh, civil society, you've got youth either in the building or out of the building, whichever perspective. Uh, you have lots of local implementers, you've got different governments at different levels. So what a local government or a local mayor may be doing may be very different to what they're doing at the federal level, for example, or vice versa. Um, what I see, and this is where I'm more in the glass half full bucket, that conversation we were really only starting to have in the late 90s, Kyoto, and, and where we've advanced since then. Yes, we would like to see ourselves a bit further along, um, but those actors were not talking to each other. They were parallel playing for so many years. We're now at least acknowledging uh, each of those issues. 
We've talked about transparency, we've heard about trust, we've heard about just the uh, ability to communicate around the issues. So unless we do that, how do you then uh, forge a path to a solution? Now, let's go down a level. Uh, what are we hearing from Glasgow? Uh, we're hearing agreements or declarations around deforestation, a known issue, but has anyone signed anything around it before? Yes, to a degree, but not to this degree. Uh, methane gas, another major agreement. Is it going to have an impact? Yes, how much? Is it ur urgent enough? Is it uh, radical enough? Who knows, we'll see. Uh, but in our world, when I ask somebody on the street, what do you think about KPMG? They either have not heard of us, and if they have heard of us, they think we're auditors and accountants, nothing wrong with that. Um, but what would we lend credibility to? Where could we add our skill set? So we've been involved in putting together the sustainability standards for how firms and companies will report on their ESG efforts. That's been rolled out through the World Economic Forum and then also uh, in COP26, another forum. Uh, you look at the financing houses, uh, 450 top financing houses who control 130 trillion in assets have decided to uh, put a, an ESG lens to their investments. They're not going to move all of that 130 trillion of assets to ESG, but they're going to have an ESG lens and they also understand the risk reward between what's truly sustainable as an investment versus what won't be in the next 10 or 20 years. They may not be sexy. They may not make the headlines, but those are the type of things that really will mobilize the private sector for the achievement of both partnerships, but also key elements of the SDGs. Thanks, Mark. So can you give us an idea of what KPMG is doing from a global perspective, um, given your global role? I know we're short on time, so I'll make this uh, <laughs> quick. But um, I, I mentioned about um, standards, sustainability standards. I'll give you a little bit of a history lesson here. Um, back in the 30s, um, there really was a wild west around how companies reported to the capital markets. Some did, some didn't, some did something in the middle. Uh, there was regulation at that time to see how can we bring a conformity to accounting standards. Everyone said it wouldn't work. Uh, it's too much of an administrative burden. It's too complicated. How do you bring that kind of consistency to, to our marketplace? And yet that is the cornerstone of our capital markets today. So if we look at that historical example and then bring it to what I just mentioned around sustained standards, having an equal standing in relation to the importance to capital markets, to investments, to accountability and transparency, a firm like ours has to play a role in that regard. It's not just what's important to us, it's also what's important to our clients. We have that almost obligation uh, to our clients uh, and indeed many of the other bigger firms are involved in this as well. So talk a, a little bit, I'll talk about the US perspective in a second, but why don't you talk a little bit about global KPMG impact and what we're doing there? Yes, I will turn the tables on you in a yes. second. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the last the last point I'll make is more of a personal reflection, personal journey I've had. Um, somebody, one of the speakers from IBM earlier was talking about spending time in the Peace Corps in Zambia. Uh, and I spoke to her at the break. Uh, my family is from there. I've spent many years there. And my own personal rationale for what truly is sustainable, what truly will drive economic growth and true ownership, it has to come from within. Within is different in different contexts, but um, from our point of view, um, all our member firms, and we have 230,000 people around the world, uh, are embedded in their local communities. So what is good for that uh, country, that jurisdiction, that region, is good for our business. Um, so we're inherently linked uh, with, with those communities. Uh, but we also have an obligation to support them. So how do we do that? We do it through citizenship, and this is where I'll turn the tables on you. Uh, but we also do it through the provision of our services. Um, before, we haven't radically changed our services. Yes, ESG is becoming the new area of delivery. But for a long time, we advise on infrastructure deals or we advise on tax and so forth. Um, but we really didn't understand the true impact of those services, good, bad or indifferent. We're now tracking that in a way that we want to say through our services, can we move that needle uh, and particularly link them through to the SDGs. So KPMG Impact launched last year, it's, its foundational pillar is the SDGs. So we're trying to map all those things we do around the world 
at the country level of how it moves the needle with the SDGs. So with that, I'll now turn it to you because the other side of the equation is what the firm is doing for ourselves, yeah. both here in the US and globally. And I know you as the chair uh, of a foundation, you have a perspective there, but you also deliver a lot of services to corporates and their foundations. And have you seen any kind of change in just ethos, mindset, the actual application uh, of funds uh, yeah. in the corporate philanthropic world? So I'm going to come back to that. Um, we keep jumping around a little bit, but that's okay. That's how we talk. <laughs> um, so one of the things that we're, we're really focused on right now is around impact reporting. Um, we are obviously doing this for our clients, but how do we do this if we don't do this for ourselves? So earlier this year, uh, the U.S. firm launched a reporting initiative called our Transparency Report. And this was really opened our eyes internally um, around the transparency of our diversity and inclusion footprint um, in the firm. Following that, we realized we need to get started on our own ESG report. And so um, I've been leading the charge on our first materiality assessment, which has been an interesting uh, process and a journey because it's trying to identify those priority areas for us as a firm to report on. And we really, re you know, what's resonated through that is the importance of partnerships, right? It's not just the internal partnerships and linking all of the businesses together, but it's talking to our clients, what worked for them, what didn't work for them. It's talking to our community partners what's important for them uh, in an ESG setting. So that's sort of one uh, aspect that we're working on. The second is the philanthropic um, hat that I wear. So we've had a foundation uh, for 52 years and we've been on a journey for the last six months on refreshing our vision and our mission. And historically our foundation was focused on education, um, a lot of partnerships with higher ed, COVID allowed us to pivot. Um, we pivoted to racial equality. We launched a fund. We supported charities um, that were driving uh, support around black mental health, um, training and education for underrepresented. And one of my favorite partnerships that came out of that um, last two years ago was one with Europe. Um, so Europe, for those of you that don't know this, um, is all about providing training and education to underrepresented youth. One of my favorite stories was uh, when they were giving us the pitch was about a young girl who um, had just got into the program and she was so excited. She stopped apparently cleaning the dishes um, to, to take this phone call from Europe and her, her mom's yelling at her in the background saying, you know, do the dishes. And she's like, mom, I just got a job. Um, and she got into this program, graduated, went to school. And what I love about this story is her uncle, who never finished school, heard this, and he decided to go back into school and get a job. So it's partnerships like that um, that we're really kind of ramping up. Another is one around future leaders, um, our future leaders program. Uh, this is a partnership that we started um, a few years ago. We do it aside with our women's PGA. Um, where we give a uh, $10,000 scholarship uh, to, again, uh, young women um, in need um, go to school. They not only get the scholarship, but they get to be a part of a leadership retreat at Stanford University. And Condoleezza Rice is one of the faculty members, so jealous <laughs> of that opportunity. But what they also do is they get aligned uh, with a mentor, uh, another female leader in the firm, to kind of guide them through the next four years. Um, it's been a really fun way to just watch and hear their stories. Um, we also talk about our people being um, part of the solution. Um, and for our people, um, I still remember this 15 years ago, talking to a senior partner saying, how do I get involved? And I wanted to join a board. And she said, your time will come. And it was so frustrating to hear that because you just want to get going yesterday. Um, and now I'm on three boards, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> so one of the things that we've um, been really uh, pushing our people to focus on is around nonprofit board service. Um, you know, get involved. Uh, the smallest action drives a huge impact. And through those board service opportunities, a firm like KPMG, where you're, you're all about professional services and 
um, showing your talent, uh, you can really be helpful. On. Yeah, that last point, I'll just pick up on that a little bit. Uh, back to my earlier point about that ecosystem um, that we're seeing in Glasgow, that same kind of patchwork, uh, that kind of convergent of actors, they're all our clients as well. So Anita and I support nonprofits, international organizations, and so forth, and, and, and Anita also supports corporates. And our common thread is around social impact uh, services. Uh, but the firm as a whole have tens of thousands of clients across all sectors, across all countries, um, and of all different sizes. So do we have a way, is it an obligation even, to share what we're learning from other experiences across the world that could be useful to those clients that we haven't uh, either worked with yet or haven't engaged in those conversations um, and do so in a way that connects back to something that's not self-serving it connects back to the sdgs um, and the sdgs are great in one way and perfect in another because there's so many layers to them but you can't ignore any one of them they're so relevant in our own right, but how they interconnect, in, interconnect with each other. Um, I've reflected on Anita's kind of client set over the last number of years, and a lot of corporates focus, say, on one SDG. Uh, we, as a firm, we focus on SDG 4, lifelong learning. Um, and we may have just decided that was enough and do no harm in any other SDG. That thinking has changed completely now. You, it's not enough to just do no harm. You need to think about your actions around one SDG, which may be apparent and may be applicable for you as a company, um, but understand how that will have unintended consequences, positive or otherwise, with other SDGs. So we're expanding the acknowledgement of influence and consequences about what we do. Once you do that, um, you start to understand uh, the interconnection of move one piece, it will uh, progress another. Yeah, so for us, SDG 17, I mean, Mark talks a lot about us, uh, us focusing on SDG 4. And for us, SDG 17 has always been a part of this. Um, we can't do our work without the partnerships, but I think we've been a little shy in kind of calling it out. And so as we've been on this journey for refreshing our strategy for the foundation, uh, that SDG 17 keeps coming to the center of, of everything that we do. And so um, I know everybody wants to know like what we're gonna focus on and um, I, I'm gonna have to say, just stay tuned uh, <laughs> because next year actually marks our uh, the firm's 125th anniversary and we've got this huge initiative on um, what our foundation is gonna focus on. But what's important is um, we really couldn't have gotten here without the partnerships of um, a lot of organizations and a lot of internal stakeholders as well. Yeah, and some of these partners that we have are inherent to our kind of core business. Uh, Microsoft are supporting us here today. They are a strategic alliance partner of the firm in delivering up our core services. And yet we have a set of values that align as well related to the SDGs. So those are the type of partners that we want to have day to day in the actual kind of normal conduct of our work. And as that evolves, you start to see these uh, value add um, initiatives being added. Um, the, the last thing I'll mention, um, and, and this is more in Anita's field, but the connection with your employees and how does that work in practice? Uh, you do have uh, a, an obligation to your business to train your people. That's, that's, that goes without saying. But what we're doing now is raising awareness of all of these social issues. There's a lot of focus on the E and ESG. What about the S? And what does the G mean? Uh, do our people even know? So we're gonna work with entities like NYU Stern, University of Cambridge to educate our 230,000 people consistently around the world so we can at least talk with one single uh, kind of common goal. Uh, it'll be deployed differently in those jurisdictions, but at least have a sense of what we're uh, signing up to as a firm at the global level. Uh, and it's done by people who know what they're talking about. That is where we want to move. Uh, as much as we focus externally on SDG 4, it's as important internally and use our force and our clients uh, to, to affect change. Yeah, and I think, you know, some of the other partnerships that we've been a part of for a long time, um, the Association for Corporate Citizenship Professionals was, is a membership organization that started 15 years ago. And we were actually a founding partner of theirs. Um, I've been on the board, I just rolled off, um, but 
they are a company, uh, they're, they're an organization that really focuses on companies and their corporate purpose. But I think being a part of organizations like IdeaGen now um, really helps gives us a voice um, in talking about the partnerships that we are driving, but also supporting. So thank you. Very well said. Thank you.